This is WKYT This Morning. Good Wednesday morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And I'm Bill Bryant. It's so good to have you here on WKYT Wednesday, May 18th. It's hump day and the weekend yes, is. is, you know, it's on the way. We can We're see halfway it there, right? right? Yeah. Now at 6 o'clock, Kentucky Democrats are split down the middle. A look at the incredibly close race in the party's presidential nomination. We'll have that also an update on a fire that destroyed two businesses in eastern Kentucky. And why President Obama is threatening to veto a House packed backed bill that would provide millions of dollars to combat the Zika virus. We have the rain outside early this morning once again, but the good news is it does move on out as we go through your day. So a much better afternoon in store. 68 degrees, you gotta love that. Actually, it gets much better for tomorrow. But you better enjoy it while it lasts. Here comes more rain late in the work week. I'll show you that coming up. All right, and here's the latest news from WKYT. And one of the closest races of the presidential cycle, Hillary Clinton narrowly defeated Senator Bernie Sanders in Kentucky's primary. The margin is less than 2,000 votes. Both candidates spent a lot of time in Kentucky. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk this morning to break down the numbers in this very tight race. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. While Hillary Clinton won Kentucky, she had such a slim margin of victory over Senator Bernie Sanders that she has to split the state's delegates with him. For hours, the Democratic presidential primary was too close to call. Sanders was in the lead by a handful of votes when Clinton came back. The former first lady won by less than 2,000 votes. When you take a look at the numbers of votes cast, you can see just how close this race was. Clinton ended the night with 46.76% of the vote, which is just half of 1% more than the number of votes that Sanders received. In all, more than 450,000 people voted. In Lexington, the majority of voters supported Clinton, but it was still a close race. She received less than 3,000 more votes than Sanders here in Fayette County. And for years, Kentucky has been considered a stronghold for the Clinton family, so Sanders was quick to capitalize on Clinton's narrow victory in the Commonwealth last night. We'll hear what both candidates had to say about the tight primary coming up at 6.30. From the Live Desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Thank you, Mark. And Bill, last night I turned on the news at 6 o'clock, and there you were talking about the results. You know, is there anything that stood out to you last night? Well, oh, I think the, the close margin, obviously, and the geographic breakout of it all, in that Bernie Sanders claimed coal country in eastern Kentucky. A lot of anger about some recent statements by Hillary Clinton that probably touched off some of that. Clinton won in southern Kentucky and many of those areas along the Kentucky Tennessee border and, and out in that region, and then in the urban areas is where she managed to uh, pull ahead by winning in Lexington and Louisville. Not big wins, but enough to, uh, to get her by in the Kentucky primary. Well, thanks so yeah. much, Bill. Interesting, huh? It was very interesting and a close race indeed. So here's a closer breakdown of the 55 Democratic delegates that were up for grabs in Kentucky. The margin between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders stands at less than one half of one percent. That means each candidate will likely pick up at least 25 of Kentucky's delegates. The other five delegates will be handed out once the final vote tallies are in. Sanders did win the primary in Oregon, but overall, Clinton is now just 92 delegates short of the number needed to clinch the Democratic nomination. Donald Trump's win in Oregon's primary puts him 77 delegates away from clinching the GOP nomination. He won Kentucky's Republican caucus back in March. Now, there were no surprises in the U.S. Senate race in Kentucky. Incumbent Republican Senator Rand Paul easily won the GOP primary. And on the Democratic side, Lexington Mayor Jim Gray had no trouble in a field of seven candidates. You can find complete election results at WKYT.com or you can download the WKYT News app. New on WKYT this morning, a man has died after being hit by a car in McCreary County. The coroner says the victim is 37, a 37 year old man. He was hit by a truck just before 11 on US 27 in Stearns next to the Parkland Motel. State and local police are investigating. The victim's name has not been released. In Moorhead, investigators now say a fire that destroyed two businesses last month was set on purpose. Moorhead police say surveillance video from the morning of April 12th shows a person person entering the building. A short time later, the video shows flames coming from that building. The fire destroyed H2O wireless and tobacco and electric beach tanning on West Main Street. The owner of the building told us the fire caused around a million dollars in damage.
A state trooper who was killed in the line of duty nearly 30 years ago is being remembered by his community. Trooper Johnny Edrington was killed during a traffic stop in December of 1988 on Highway 80 in Laurel County, and police have never made any arrests. It is still considered a cold case. His family joined police for a memorial service yesterday, and a wreath was placed at Trooper Edrington's gravesite in Campbellsville. Also this morning, the Floyd County Sheriff's Office says Facebook gave them some good leads in a theft case. In a Facebook posting, deputies ask if anyone recognized a man who was caught on camera stealing from a home in the Banner community. They say he stole two dryers, a weed eater, and a vacuum, among some other items. And deputies say hours after posting the pictures of the crime, they found the vehicle used to haul away the items. So alligators are known for eating many things, turtles, birds. <laughs> And the occasional human limb. Right, uh, but this alligator seems to have a sweet tooth. We take you down south, of course. This picture shows <laughs> a very large gator crawling into a canal with a watermelon clamped in its jaws. The Florida Agricultural Crimes Intelligence Unit says the gator stole the melon from a nearby field. Experts say <laughs> it is very unusual for gators to eat watermelon, but in this case, he did. He's a healthy alligator. <laughs> right. Got to eat your food. Watching those calories a little bit. <laughs> Let's check weather on your Wednesday. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, it's a wet go at it in many locations early this morning. As you step out the door, you will need that umbrella and that raincoat as well. It's a little bit chilly outside once again. And not only are we looking at it from the west, central, and uh, back toward I-64 corridor, but also southern areas. As you work your way into Whitley County, Laurel, Knox, even Bell County, you're getting some across 25 east and west. And as you roll up 25, also parallel to uh, that 75 corridor there in Laurel County, London getting in on the mix. East Burnstadt, you're going to be next in line as well as a couple of showers roll by you. But the heaviest rain, the nastiest rain, is setting up right along that 64 corridor and also the BG Parkway. It's not a good go at it early this morning. 27, 127, 150, 68 as you roll back toward Campbellsville and also sitting there, Bradfordsville uh, in Marion County and Lebanon. That's where you're going to be seeing some of that rain continuing to funnel on in. Richmond, Madison County, that's a wet go at it, uh, especially as you work your way back toward Lancaster and also Paint Lick. Uh, go just into northern portions of that area, and you're talking Bryantsville, still picking up on some of that rain. Go down 64, and it's a wet go at it there, too. So, really, anywhere you are in central and back toward the northeast, that's where we're seeing some of that rain at that moment. It's trying to push on out. Frankfurt, you're getting some showers at this moment here and there. It's bits and pieces. Uh, but that heaviest rain is now fading for you guys. Northern zones, you only have a small chance of rain the rest of the morning hours before it fades for everybody here in the next uh, few hours. Let's say four to six hours for most. I would say noontime to 2 p.m. for the far southeastern zones as you get down toward your Bell County, Harlan, and also the Howe Rogers Parkway. But get into your afternoon. Your afternoon looks pretty good. It's not all that bad. 68 degrees, it's pretty nice. Low 70s typically is where we are this time of year. Now, much better late in the day today. Then we hit Thursday. Thursday's fantastic. You're talking 70 to 75 degrees. Looks great, feels great. A lot of sunshine. That's the day to knock out all those plans because Friday, here comes some more rain sliding back into the forecast. And it looks like some. Pretty heavy rainfall, too, so we just got to keep that in mind if you're heading out to the Apple Blossom Festival. That's there in Pike County. Friday looks pretty soaked. Saturday looks pretty soaked during the morning hours for any events you have going on, all those 5Ks happening. As I was going over events, and I always talk about events in my forecast, uh, those 5 there's a lot of 5Ks, a lot happening. And if you're going to be doing that, just know you might have to be going in a little bit of rain there Saturday morning. But Saturday afternoon, is looking much drier, not fully dry, but much drier than the morning hours. My daughter saw your forecast yesterday morning about Thursday, and she said, Mom, we have to get out of the house and go do something fun. <laughs> That's exactly These kids right. are ready for summer, That's Micah. That's exactly Everybody's wanting to get outside, yes. okay, and Thursday's going to be the day to do that. Good to hear. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Micah. Each morning, we bring you weather and traffic together. Here's Officer Don with a look at what's happening on the roads. Good morning.
Good morning. Of course, the roads are wet, and that will impact us a little bit this morning. But right now, traffic is pretty light. On the inner loop of Man Award, just past Alumni, there's a stalled car. They're working to get that out of the way, but not a big factor for us. Let's get a look outside, and we'll show you drive times on the way in. As far as traffic flow goes, first, Nicholasville Road, Harrodsburg Road, coming in on the north side. No major problems right now on North Broadway. Uh, as far as our drive times from Nicholasville, normal stuff, 13 minutes from Georgetown, 16, and from Winchester, 21. Now back to you in the studio. Okay, Don, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And you can always get the latest traffic and weather info anytime with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. Download that for free in the app or Google Play stores. Hey, good morning again. It's good to have you with us. Here we are on your Wednesday morning hump day. We're rolling through this week, you know. <laughs> Long one for some of us yesterday. We're okay, halfway there, see. guys. Just hang on, right? <laughs> A lot more coming up on WKYT. Why Lexington firefighters say they expect more homes to be damaged by fires just like this one you're seeing here. Yeah, an interesting WKYT look at that. Also, find out what the TSA is doing to try and cut down on those long security lines. That's ahead this morning. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT this morning. Good morning to you. We're so glad you're with us on WKYT on this Wednesday. It is 614. Hours after a huge fire destroyed a Lexington home, firefighters are still on the scene this morning. In fact, they just brought in a new shift. Yeah, that fire was so big you could see it from miles away. It spread to four other homes on Stansbury Cove near Hayes Boulevard. It was a kind of a fire that firefighters say they're having to get used to. WKYT's Caitlin Sintner is there this morning live to explain why. Caitlin? Good morning, Michelle. Now I know it may be hard to see behind me because of my umbrella, but the home is badly burned. Firefighters were just up walking around the home moments ago, standing up on the front porch. Now this fire, they say, started yesterday afternoon. They called it a chaotic scene, and they're still here working to figure out what caused the fire. Smoke could be seen for miles. Officer Don flew over the scene, getting video from Sky First. Just after firefighters got into the home to fight the fire, the roof began to collapse. So they quickly had to pull out and contain it from the outside. Lexington firefighters on scene said the fire on Stansbury Cove near Hayes Boulevard spread quickly because the homes are built so closely together. And they say this is an issue they'll probably continue to face. The problem is a lot of these houses in these new neighborhoods, this particular house here, as a matter of fact, on one side is less than 10 feet to his neighbor and the other side is less than seven. Now, firefighters said it took them about 45 minutes to get the fire under control yesterday. And as I said, they're still here working to figure out that cause. Live in Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Help is on the way for airports packed with passengers waiting in long security lines. The TSA is sending five K-9 teams, adding more than 100 full-time agents and increasing overtime at Chicago's packed O'Hare Airport. The move comes after passengers across the country deal with seemingly never-ending lines. Hundreds of missed flights and dozens left sleeping inside their terminals. For some trips, it's easier to drive it than it is for you to hang out at the airport three hours for your flight to take off. We're going to surge new screeners uh, into the airports there to deal with the backup and the crowds. On Monday, TSA pre-check lanes reported shorter lines with only 25% of travelers waiting more than 10 minutes. All right, so some slight improvements. We'll see how it goes. Our time is 616 now, and he says it isn't enough. President Obama is threatening to veto a bill that has been backed by members of the House that would provide more than $600 million to fight the Zika virus. The bill was introduced by Republican Congressman Hal Rogers of Kentucky. The plan, though, would provide only a third of the resources requested by the president. But the House is ignoring Obama's veto threat and is planning to vote on the bill today. And the Senate has already voted on a $1.1 billion measure to fight the Zika epidemic. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg will meet privately with conservative leaders today amid claims the social networking site is biased. The website Gizmodo reported Facebook workers often left out conservative stories even if they were trending. Zuckerberg denies that and says he hopes to have a direct conversation today about what the site stands for. In Seattle, an ambulance was speeding through the streets and police were chasing after it. Police say a man who jumped out of a hotel window led them on a chase in a stolen ambulance. At one point, he rammed into a cruiser. Officers were eventually able to convince the man to surrender. No one was injured in the incident. 
The time is morning 618 on WKYT, and overtime rules change today. It makes some 4 million more U.S. workers eligible to be paid more for working extended hours. The Obama administration policy changes are intended to counter erosions in overtime protections. Well, Macy's and the malls may be in trouble these days, but TJ Maxx is going strong. The retailer bucked the trend of sluggish department store sales, with sales up 7% in the first First quarter. It's proof that Americans are not just buying online, they're also looking for discounts and deals. Amazon has expanded its restaurant delivery business to include hundreds of restaurants in New York City and Dallas. The company says orders should be delivered in one hour or less. The service is free with an Amazon Prime membership. It was already available in Chicago, Los Angeles, and Portland. Maybe some more rollouts soon. Taco Bell is testing some new looks out. The Louisville based fast food chain will experiment with four different design concepts this summer that feature sleek, modern seating, exposed wooden beams, and trendy light fixtures. And the company wants to increase evening sales and compete with upscale chains like Chipotle. So we'll see how that goes. Of course, a lot of folks just go through the drive through so, <laughs> They don't even know. go inside the Taco Bell, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Why are we always talking about food so early in the morning? Uh, I don't know. Hungry, it gets you though. hungry, doesn't it? Yes, it does. WKYT this morning is just getting started. A warning for parents about your child's sunscreen. Details on a new study that finds you may not be getting what you pay for. Well, I know we have rain now, but you may need that sunscreen here within the next six to seven days. We actually have some dry days, not day, but days in your forecast. I'm going to show you when this rain moves on out. Coming up. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. Your time is 623 and the rain is slowing down. Yeah, so that's hopefully good. a little encouraging. Yes. <laughs> Make we it need a, a sunny day, day right? right? So Hillary Clinton narrowly defeated Senator Bernie Sanders to win Kentucky's primary. It was a close one, and that's what's trending at this hour. Clinton is now less than a hundred delegates away from clinching the Democratic presidential nomination. And it was less than two thousand votes that gave her the win in Kentucky. Sanders did win Oregon's presidential primary. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray will square off against Republican Senator Rand Paul in November. Both men cruised to victory in yesterday's primary. And firefighters are still on the scene this morning of a fire that destroyed one Lexington home and damaged four others on Stansbury Cove that's near Hayes Boulevard. They don't know how the fire started yet, but they say it spread quickly because the homes in that neighborhood are so close together. We're continuing to look into the circumstances there. And we're going to get a quick check on weather this morning with the showers rolling through again. Here's meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, you always hate to see that with homes on fire. You just absolutely hate it. I think the best thing you can pull out of this is this rain that kind of just falls there on those houses and hope that those ambers don't light back up. This rain will take care of that. So uh, that's the only positive you can really pull out of that. It's just a terrible scene to see. But you have the rain out and about. And, and look, this continues to funnel on in. It's slowly but surely, slowly, is the key word, but surely moving down south. And once it does, it starts to fall apart as we hit throughout your morning hours. I'd say right around 10 a.m., if your kids are heading out to education days there at the Lexington Legends, more than likely you'll at least have some mist, maybe a small chance at a couple of showers. For the most part, that rain, the heaviest rain's long gone. So still, I would take a, a, a raincoat just in case. It's not going to be the best looking time, but you know, it's not going to be the wettest either. London, 51 degrees, 50 degrees there in Jackson. Not a good look in many locations. Wet roadways as you take off early this morning. By the afternoon, though, we clear some things on out. Afternoon looks mainly dry, 68 degrees. Pretty good day in store, guys. We're going to be talking about another day tomorrow that looks phenomenal, but you better enjoy it while it lasts because Friday is Saturday. It's not looking all that good. I'll show you rain coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Well, look at the bright side. We haven't had to deal with sunburns uh, for the most part this spring, right? That's true. I can't say I'm sad about that with uh, all this rain we've I know. seen. And, and that kind of links into this story yeah. because here we are just ahead of summer, and there is some troubling news for parents out there. Yeah, a new study finds many are getting burned when it comes to buying sunscreen. Consumer Reports tested 65 lotions, sprays, and sticks, all labeled as SPF 30 or above. They found that near Nearly half of them did not live up to their labels. Two types failed the study by huge margins. Banana Boat Kids and CVS Kids, which are advertised as SPF 50, actually have a protection factor of eight. Mm. 
So Not good go. news there, so right. keep your eye out. Well, police in New York City have had some very tough words for people who ride motorcycles there illegally. We want to send out a very strong message to the nitwits and knuckleheads who insist on operating these illegal vehicles. <laughs> Sounds like my dad, knucklehead. Yeah. Commissioner William Bratton said the department has been cracking down on unlicensed drivers who operate ATVs, minibikes, and motorcycles without helmets. So far this year, more than 600 bikes have been confiscated. Yesterday, police crushed about 70 of them. And well, I wasn't saying my dad was a knucklehead. I was saying he would always say, you knucklehead. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I had understand. to clear that up. <laughs> you got that. <laughs> well, it sounds like they're getting pretty tough on uh, motorcycles there in New York City. It is good to have you along. 626 on WKYT on your Wednesday morning. Uh, up and at it here on this brand new day. Yeah, when we come back, a consumer alert in Lexington. A crime at a gas station has police putting banks on notice. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $60 million. Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $187 million. We'll be right back on WKYT This Morning.